Hello, hey, man. How's it going? It's, uh, you know, uh, living in this end times plan. Yeah. Watching. <laughs> learning. Yeah. It's, no, um, uh, almost the end of the coal there in these days. So yeah, so yeah that you know may be an improvement over our lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, as with every end, is uh, also a beginning, or however you want to look at it. So this may be. Uh, How are you? Me? <laughs> me? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I um. I'm Danny. And Danny. Yes, sir. Yes. How you doing? How are you? Uh-huh. Hanging in there. Okay. Oh. Anybody else there? <laughs> no, nah, it's just the usual the usual uh, people. Who's that? Suspect. Thousand <laughs> onlookers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thousand <laughs> onlookers. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so. They're, uh, they're sitting there. They are. Uh, you know, with Bell, with that those uh, that phone group, Bell Canada, I realized like they they're linked into everything. Yeah. You know, because I, when I see people get like security systems in their house, like yeah, promoters, it, yeah. those things are linked to the phone. So yeah. I guess. It's All you're other. doing is telling the crooks where you are, so they can go and steal from you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, you forget new... two letters in front of security. I N. I N. In security. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, it's um. I just come back from feeding the animals, and my fingers are somewhat frozen. Uh, and I find out by looking at the thermometer that it's supposed to be one below. But it feels yeah. more like six or seven below. So I don't know what's going on, but ain't much different from usual. The other day we had a uh, like a, a wind that they say that it came from up north by you. It came down here. It was really windy that day, and it was cold. Yeah. When that wind hit you at that fast, it's... we we got some cold days this week. Uh, I've measured uh, uh, seven, eight below zero in the house. Even the fridge, which is set always to keep things at four degrees. Above Fahrenheit, four degrees above freezing, centigrade. Um, the um, um, milk was frozen, so that that means that even the fridge couldn't keep up with the cold. It also means you'll have that milk for a lot longer than when you are. Uh... I've got, I've got thermometers inside the fridge trying to figure out when things go normal or abnormal, you know. Yeah. You, you've you probably seen them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Any event, we're, uh, I'm told, getting into spring. Spring has sprung. Yeah. But... Somebody who guides the weather hasn't agreed yet. <laughs> well, I wonder if it's a, a specific st- strategy, those people who guide the weather each year. They, do they have, like, a plan of what they want the weather to be like for that year? Yeah. Probably linked to moving the water around. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me, Danny. Wouldn't surprise me. And I also remember those those icebergs, those submarines move around. That changes things. Yeah. I wonder if they're still doing that. Just when you think it's all over, a couple of weeks ago, it looked like 
everything was down to the grass. Then you go to bed and you get up in the morning and they say two centimeters of snow. Yeah. And you look outside and it's kind of over your foot. Now, I don't know if they've changed centimeters in size or not, but it was uh, more like uh, four or five inches of snow. And it hasn't gone away. Much of it is still out there. Yeah. I don't know if you have snow in New York or not. It's just little, like, the little boulders that you see left over from uh, the snow yeah. banks, people. You know, on people's lawns, you'll see little patches. I saw a guy the other day picking at it with pickaxe. They just get him. Well, it says here that we're supposed to go above zero for two days, Monday and Tuesday, and then back down below zero. And I don't know if it's supposed to be rain or snow during those two days, but usually when it's around zero, uh, you can get snow. Uh, four or five below, four or five above is usually the condition for snow around here. And are they are they right? Do they get it right uh, most of the time? The uh, oh. meteorologists. No, because they change it every day, and and it seems like they make all the adjustments every day, and and it never gets to be what they had said it would be in three or four days. So, but it's it's not uh, it's not off as much as you get off from. Uh, magnetic readings during the summertime, you know. Summertime they'll say something like it's it's going to be twenty degrees centigrade. And then when the sun starts shining on the thermometer, it reads fifty degrees centigrade. Now at fifty degrees centigrade you could hardly walk because of the heat. So it's not 20, and it's not 50. But electronic machines can't work properly in the middle of a magnetic field, and that's what the problem is. You can put two thermometers, one that gets the light and one that does not, on two sides of the same pole. And one will read 20, the other side will read 50. Now, when we went to school, I don't know about you guys, but I'm 75, so I was there before you guys, a bit longer. When we went to school, they said a thermometer measures cold and heat, temperature. Why is it that the sun causes these thermometers today to read 50 degrees when it's obviously not 50. It's because they want electronic machines to run faster when they're reading your consumption of energy so you can be billed higher than what you actually use. And if you have a hydro company, they are allowed into your home. They put in a magnetic machine called a plate. These days, they've replaced the rod that used to be on the roof, lightning rod, and then went into as a ground rod. Now they have a plate so that it can sit there and wait for water. And water is the mode of transmission. And once the water runs over the plate, 
it brings with it all of the magnetism it picked up from the living stones around it, magnetized rocks, and charges the magnetic field that exists everywhere but is not a, uh, a field that would affect anybody. Uh, it charges the magnetic field with this electromagnetism by sending surpluses of electricity in your house and then feeding it down to the plate. And you know what a plate is for. It's where you start consuming what is on the table if you have a plate. And it's the same thing for electricity. It converts to electromagnetism when soaked in water and rises as a magnetic cloud. Now, we've talked about this before, but always because you never know who's listening, mm -hmm. in the end, you have uh, glands all over your body that control the electricity of your body. The electricity is what sends messages to the brain and heart and lungs and so that they do the things they're supposed to do automatically. But once they get this electromagnetic charge that's surplus to the natural, what it does is your glands start to shiver and they bring glands around them together kind of like trying to warm up with cats sleeping in a bundle, you know, to warm up. But once you get this moving together, you get what is known as clumping. You can see it in cat litter when they pee. It clumps in the litter. And once it clumps, it can't do the job it was designed to do. And if it's held long enough, like you live in one place long enough, and I would suggest five years uh, would bring it to its maximum. If you live in a magnetic field, your body will develop a clumping disease. And that would be a stroke, a heart attack, a cancer. Every disease they collect money for to try and solve is caused by clumping due to an electromagnetic field. So therefore, when I had trouble walking because of a problem with my hip, it's because I had moved into the house. Staying there long enough, I developed hydroseal, which is a, a clumping of your system used for sexual reproduction and urinating. And what it does is it builds a ball within your system, a clump, which continually puts pressure on you that makes you feel you need to go to the washroom. And then it starts pulling back on your penis so that it backs up into the body and there goes your reproductive system and you spend your day wondering if I get in this car will I be able to get to the end of the ride without having to go to the bathroom that is just one of the 
results of electromagnetism in a house. Now, this house is not your usual house. I suggest that it was built in 1972 for the purpose of testing out genocide. And it was built by a consortium. The consortium includes Hydro, it includes Bell, both having access to your house. It includes the municipality so that it can protect those that are involved in this genocide, such as the hospital that murdered Tom Biber. It includes the Ontario Provincial Police so that any complaints made will go nowhere. Worse, they'll start giving you trouble. It includes the fire department, especially the chief of fire men and women, because they, unlike police, are allowed access into your house for your own safety. They want to make sure that you have a fire alarm, so they say. But they don't want to do anything about the electromagnetic field because they're watching to see how long you'll survive. And the only way to survive is to disrupt their system. And their system includes a water collection system around the foundation that does not take water away from the basement foundation floor, but rather brings it to it. It doesn't do anything about the the lightning rod that they put in as a ground because they even changed it recently for a plate to make sure it gathers up more of the electromagnetic field. And it doesn't take away from the concrete material that they mix together to make sure that the foundation itself gathers up an electromagnetic field and creates it in your basement for you. Bell Canada and Hydro conspire together by putting in a connection between the uh, Hydro box and your telephone so that the information sent in to raise the magnetic field by hydro is then transferred to the telephone network system, which can more easily distribute it throughout the house because of the fine wiring a telephone system has as opposed to a hydro wire, which is made to carry 110 volts and 15 to 25 amps. So this house in particular was built without the use of any plaster. It is totally a concrete foundation with a wooden house and each room in the house is designed differently so that they can measure the effect of the electromagnetic field in different places and especially how close or how far they are from the water system. Where are the toilets? Where is the laundry? Where is the kitchen? 
And who gets the most electricity? Well, the kitchen. Because in the kitchen, the electric services provided to the fridge and stove and and microwave oven and freezer and what have you in there has an opportunity to act and react to the fact that that's where the water is running most of the time. There usually is a bathroom adjacent to the kitchen as well. So if there is a woman working full-time in the kitchen, there's a very good chance that she'll develop breast cancer. She could very well get what you call fat bottom lady approach to getting older where everything from the hips up gets bigger all of a sudden. And uh, what do you do about it? Well, in, in this particular house, on this particular piece of land, um, and this this house was replacing a, a house that was right next to it in 1972. It burnt down, so the foundation of that house is still there on the south side of the house. And the house was built, and lo and behold, in the middle of the foundation down below the house, uh, I discovered that there were uh, rocks, uh, rocks that were made of granite and that had something, I guess, equivalent to quartz in the middle of them, and I could tell because I found some rocks intact and I found some rocks that had broken open. And I could see that there was more than one mineral involved in these rocks, which means that when they get heated up or frozen, uh, there was a possibility that one of the materials, quartz or granite, will expand at a different rate than the other one. And that will cause the rock to break open and release more magnetism, if you will, under the house. Anybody who lives in a house that has uh, rebar, is living with the same thing. The concrete itself and the containment of iron uh, is basically a method of moving more and more electromagnetic fields around the place. I don't think they built much anymore of uh, uh, apartment buildings without rebar in the concrete. After all, when we drink water, we're drinking a combination of water and minerals. One of the minerals that we drink is iron. And iron reacts to magnetism. If you want to do a test on magnetism, take out some coins and run a magnet over them and see which one lifts and sticks to the magnet and which one doesn't. Don't limit it to this year. Go back and and put a, a bunch of pennies dating back to the early 1900s on the table, and you'll see that there is a different content 
of magnetism in the coins that you separate from the non-magnetized one. If if uh, a nickel or a dime or a 25 cent piece or 50 cent piece or a dollar piece have different mineral contents in their makeup over a period of years, it is, in fact, as a result of them being magnetized differently. And according to my uncle, who was the foreman making coins at the Mint, when he told me a secret, this is a code. And the code will tell the person who knows the code what is happening and what is changing over time. Who deals with coins to the extent that they could be searching that on a day-to-day basis? Obviously, religion. Obviously, people who volunteer to collect money for cancer research, heart research, uh, lung strokes. brain disease. Alzheimer's. Casinos. Deal with coins. Transport companies deal with coins. Now, Recently, there's an interesting addition to this coding network. Is how do you measure how much electromagnetism currently exists in Jerd or Danny? Well, You make them go through a metal detector. And in the metal detector system, you make sure that you know the name of the person, either by when they bought the ticket or when they register for a flight. And that then allows you to find out where they live. Last year, the Ottawa Senators, who run a simple hockey game, put on metal detectors for everybody that goes to a hockey game. Now, that will allow them to know, in those days, a year and a half ago, the Ottawa Senators were playing in a center, Canadian Tire Center, they call it, in the richest suburb in Ottawa, Canada. So they knew that most of the people who attended the hockey game would live in that general area, and they could read their magnetic field on the pretext of looking for weapons, of course. But now they've 
been chosen to move their whole hockey team to a new location in downtown Ottawa. What's the difference between Canada and downtown Ottawa if most of the people that go to the hockey game and can afford to go to the hockey game live in Canada? Well, most of the people in Canada make their money from selling something or manufacturing something that will be sold to the government. And therefore, the connection to downtown core is companies want to take the people they'll sell to, bureaucrats, to the hockey game. They don't want to take them to their home. They want to do it in the bureaucrat's home. Home, by that I mean in the place they buy from. Downtown Ottawa. So they no longer need to know how much electromagnetism is in the bodies of the people who live in Canada out in the West End. They want to know how much electromagnetism lives inside the bureaucrats who are living in concrete monster buildings and working eight hours a day, supposedly, in the downtown core. Because the bureaucrats, as we know them today, have outlived their shelf life. We are moving from an age of developing the planet to move to a place where we will spend the next few hundred years developing developing outer space. The controllers don't need the bureaucrats that were trained to develop the planet anymore. But in order to do them in, they have to know the level of electromagnetism in their bodies and where they live. They know how much they can in, in, inject while they're at work because they built those buildings with concrete. They want to do them in. Now, all around the world, the same thing is happening. It's just the wording is different. Some people will be surrounded with war, like the Middle East. Some will be surrounded by pestilence, which is normally bugs in, in fields that grow food. Some people will be involved with famine. Others will be involved with Ebola and other magnetically induced diseases. War, pestilence, famine, and disease. But some people need to be done in in large quantities at one time. Mudslides, earthquakes, electromagnetically induced hurricanes, volcanoes, electromagnetically induced
living stones are at the heart of it. If anybody has seen the movie Jonathan Livington Seagull, you get an idea of what is happening there. Jonathan needs to go faster to feel better, needs to fly faster. And yet his teacher keeps telling him every speed is a limit. What do you want to do, Jonathan, is not fly faster. A thousand miles an hour is followed by a thousand and one. A million miles an hour is followed by a million and two. You can never go fast enough if what you're counting is miles per hour. What you want is to want to be someplace and be there. The way he describes it to his student is perfect speed is being there, Jonathan. What is the word Jonathan's a code for? A John is a toilet. In the English way of speaking. Then includes the word ant. Ants live underground. They made genetic engineering of human beings possible by investigating what human beings put in the toilet. That's where you read DNA is from what is the end product that comes out after you eat from your plate. It travels through a restructuring system and comes out at the other end as excrement. Excrement is the best place to find the animal or plant DNA. What do they eject? What do human beings eject? Sperm, excrement, urine, spit, By studying DNA, you can find out over time what DNA sequences are required to cause a predictable outcome in the personality of the person that you are intending to manufacture. So what you do is you have to find things that are common denominators to a group of people. One, they're all in school. Another, they're all in a hospital. Another, they're all in jail. Another, they're all taking airplanes. Another, they're all traveling on land. 
Another, they've got money to go to hockey games. And once you've gone through a few hundred years of collecting data, such as the reason prophylactics were created, because prostitutes, the first job on earth, were paid by the medical profession to turn in sperm. And they would have to go to the doctor and be examined and swabbed and what have you for the doctor to know that the judge who slept with this woman yesterday has this as a DNA sequence. That became too difficult as the numbers grew. And it limited the numbers that could be examined, so they developed something you call safes, prophylactics, so that the prostitute can have sex with 10 or 15 men overnight and pick up the prophylactics out of the garbage pail and turn them in. Now, once you have identified, and now at least over the last 10,000 years from 8,000 B.C. when the Ice Age began to melt to today, in different methods in different countries because of the different temperatures that exist, you collect things. Who is in a position to do that? Religion. Nuns. Can collect the data. Not necessarily because they themselves are collecting the data, but that they have access to those who would collect the data for them and steal it. Bureaucrats. Bureaucrats can force people to go for a medical Insurance company. The thing they all have in common is that they don't give a shit. They take a shit and give it to somebody else who's going to give them the data. Nuns forced men into chasing after women because they removed the supply of women from different places at different times. China removed the supply of females so that they would have an army of frustrated men. Nothing is more dangerous than a bunch of frustrated people. So 
start a war, take the men away from their homes, and what do they do in their spare time? Miss their spouse. It's important for people to grasp that there is a bigger control mechanism in this world than anything they ever imagined. And who's controlling it? I've been looking for the name that would be rightfully applied to a group of people who are, in fact, in control. And guess where it came from? It had been printed for many, many hundreds of years, but no one ever thought about it until this last few weeks, a man by the name of Donald Trump caused the name to escape. And that's something everybody should learn. If you look for something, eventually somebody is going to speak it. If you look for a name, someone somewhere is going to speak it. And the words they mentioned that all of a sudden made a big lamp turn on in my head as two words. If they are living in the Moho discontinuity, that's deep down in underground. And if they are a government, they are a state, deep state is the name given to the people who control this from the security of the Moho discontinuity, which no one in media discusses. Not that they don't know it, they just don't discuss it, because... It is the original mission of human beings worldwide to fabricate a society of human beings as a test site for gene pools. It is the original mission. And therefore, the media leading the pack lies to people on a daily basis, not by commission as much as by omission. It is the mission of the original, the omission. If you want to know the answers to all the problems that you need to have an answer to, you have to create a laboratory. You have to populate that laboratory with guinea pigs. If you happen to be a few million people prior to the Ice Age and you work this out, and you know the Ice Age is going to last 16,000 years, 8,000 getting colder, 
and 8,000 coming back to normal, then you have the opportunity to plan that mission. If you yourself take precautions to be outside of the possibility of dying along with the rest and not being able to protect your knowledge base, so you have to take it in hiding. You have to plan your birth and rebirth. DNA does not die. It just goes dormant until it gets another opportunity. DNA can be decombined so that it never comes back as the original. That's called quantum disentanglement. Quantum entanglement is the coming together of two strands that work in combination. Decombine it by taking it and putting it in a furnace called the core of the earth. And it will come out the other end as part of the plate, a new plate of the earth. Decombined the original version never will come back. However, if before you put it in the furnace, you separate it and put each item into a different vial, and you know what the combination is, that you can put back together again and it will give you a human being. It's called an egg. And you can implant and fertilize that egg yourself. Who can do that? People in a convent who want to be promoted to show their love of God will open their legs if that's what it takes to be married to Jesus. And if you take the combinations of a person who has been described as the father and you insert it into an egg and you artificially inseminate that individual, you'll get a person that acts like the one that came before in a lab. The same way they do with sheep, pigs, chickens, Everything today that you see in the way of an animal has been manufactured to one extent or another. Not only do you have the possibility of manufacturing, you can have that DNA be passed on by the carrier in a manner that will allow it to survive up to a hundred years, going through four different generations of birth and rebirth, you can have it so that it remains dormant, and you can have it so that you can awaken it on demand.
and you can have it in a way that accidentally awakens without demand. I remember sometime recently in the last 10 years or so, 10, 20 years, where a white woman married to a white man gave birth to a black child. And they fought over the fact that that woman had in fact been in bed with another party until all of the DNA analysis was complete. She was accused. When the DNA analysis was complete, it was, in fact, two white people who were passing on genetic information from something that had been done by a predecessor, a great-grandmother who had been kept in a convent because she had misbehaved and she had to give her life to Jesus. It wasn't intended that what had occurred 80 years before or so could in fact be happening to this couple church going but it did and it's not difficult to do if you have 200,000 years to work it out And then you go into hiding and start passing it on. Why is it that Germans are known in our world as the best engineers? You'll hear people say all the time, oh, was made in Germany. Is it because Germans are smarter than Americans or smarter than Chinese or smarter than Hindus? No. It's because they are given preferential information and were genetically engineered for that task. Everyone who has been genetically engineered, and that includes, I would suggest, 99% of the people on the planet, have a shelf life for their particular role in the development of history and prehistory and post-history. And can be called to duty without their knowledge. Why is it that you hear so often there was a murder and it was this boy? And I never would have believed that could be possible. He was such a nice fellow. But he walks out on the sidewalk and shoots the congressman right across the face. And she has to live with that for the rest of her life. And he goes off to a lunatic asylum. He had nothing to do with it. He was programmed. 
and his program was triggered. But he's responsible, and he lives out his life in the equivalent of a prison. Danny, before I go, you said last time you had a question. Well, it was about, um, you were saying about how the universe is going to be destroyed. I was just curious because there's so many, you know, billions or trillions of of, uh, galaxies within it. If, like, why would they... Why would it be chosen like to be destroyed if so many other possible forms of life are out there that aren't as destructive as the ones that live here? When one talks about the end of the world or the end of uh, a universe, one is not talking about the limit being physical destruction. The limit can be um, the world as you now know it. Now, if you're going to leave this planet and go to another planet, in order to preserve the population that lives here and now and has caused all the problem that exists, the only place you could call paradise would have to be outside the universe. And the information that was given to me is that there are 26 universes. And life as we know it has lived in four of them. That's why we call this a four-dimensional universe. But there is a fifth dimension in another universe. Perfect speed is being there something we cannot seem to do in a four-dimensional universe is to say, I'm sitting in Oxford Mills, Ontario at this moment, but I would prefer to be in South America during the Olympic Games and dissolve from here and appear there. However, if you take the right people from here and allow creation to move them out of this universe to the next fifth universe, that fifth dimension becomes normal. There's a lot of hints at that possibility, not just in Jonathan Livingston Seagull, but if you look at things like Star Wars and the such that have appeared in movies over time, beam me up, Scotty, beam me up. 
That's perfect speed. Some people have been programmed with enough information to know that it's possible, but not possible in a four-dimensional universe. And they pine for the possibility. My name is Glenn E. P. Keeley. My mother was French, my father was Irish. At one time in my life, I was raised in French. And another time in my life, I was continuing my education in English. I wondered why I was given the name Glenn E. P. Keeley and then raised in French. Because the E. P. in English stands for, I was told, Emmett Patrick. But secretly, the people who gave it to me gave it to me in French. Entrée principale. Main door. Main entrance. That if there will be a movement from this place to another universe, there has to be a main entrance. This farm, this vortex in Oxford Mills is the main entrance. The people who are invited to participate and choose to participate will be at the front door. Entrée principale, EP. If you want to have a view of the place that I see now that I have been told by the cell and through the cell from creation where we're going, I was told to get a picture a painting done by a woman. The woman's name is Anna Mary Robertson. And the painting is called A Beautiful World. Now, a lot of people may not recognize what Anna Mary Robertson's name is when people talk about the painting. Her name for the art world is Grandma Moses. She lived in, starting in 1860. 200 years later, we expect to be. In 
in a fifth dimension, leaving behind the people who want and believe that this type of environment of control is worthwhile. Those of us who disagree, fundamentally disagree, and want a better place, can't pack up their bags in Germany and go to America. It's already taken. Can't leave Spain and go to Mexico. It's already taken. Can't go and live on the moon or Mars because the people here are already planning to go there. With that said, I got to go feed my animals. Okay. Bye for now.